good afternoon everyone so we'll first quickly discuss the key for minor 2 and then move on to the lecture okay so what is the answer for this one yeah so it accepts all those strings which have ba ba as the substring okay so it's actually a simple one yeah silence please once you assign meaning meanings to the states you will understand that it's a very simple one it is it looks complex because once you have ba ba all the other cases you need to handle that's the only reason why it is looking complex because it's a dfa if it were nfa it would have been much easier but the answer is quite simple it just uh, it accepts all the strings which have substring ba ba okay and uh, no both are different continuous yeah it's not subsequence it's a substring yeah silence please in case you have any doubts ask me not your neighbor please get out yeah yeah there is no self loop this is the loop is only for the first b after that whatever you are getting in between you are going back to one of these states you you try to build on your own you will understand if you try to build a dfa it will be exactly like this take the language and try to build a dfa okay give the state diagram uh, of the dfa for the language uh where each string has even number of a's and only one b okay so this can be done in multiple ways either you can directly build the dfa or you can first build two different dfas for uh, different portions of this language one having even number of a's second having only one b having only one b does not mean that language has only one b but it can have any number of a's but only one b so you build two different dfas okay two machines m1 and m2 so m1 is quite simple it's like you can imagine these states as this is q even q odd even means um, uh, number of a's so zero means even a's so you start with that so zero a's is also even a's so the first state will be an accept state and uh, if you see an a you switch from even state to odd state if you see one more a you switch from odd state to even state and so on you need not switch the state when you are seeing b's because you are not keeping track of b's so in whichever state you are as long as you keep seeing b's remain in the same state that's all okay so that is this machine and the second machine is any number of a's are allowed at any position but only one b is allowed okay so in the start state you can see any number of a's and the moment you see one b go to the second state and uh, even here you can see any number of a's that's it but if you see one more b go to the dead state those strings should be rejected once you are in dead state no matter how many characters you see you remain in the dead state okay so you have two states here three states here so when you combine them you will have six states this is very similar to the union operation the only difference is here the final state the final states in the combined machine are nothing but a cross product of the final states of the first machine and the final states of the second machine in this case there is only one final state in the first machine one final state in the second machine so the combined state is only one in the final machine that's all okay so i won't spend more time on this it's a simple one this is uh, straight forward from the lecture uh, so i won't spend time on this and this is also straight forward gives the formal description of uh, below nfa what are the states what is the alphabet what is the start state what are the set of final states and uh, what is the transition function and as i mentioned earlier in nfa the output is always a set of states so even if you have a single state as output you should have set brackets around it otherwise you will lose marks yeah yeah that is also fine yeah
like what will you do here you'll just leave them empty no then how do we know what you are writing yeah yeah what about this one what is the language recognized by this nfa yeah that's all strings starting with one so you may have other options that's okay in case you if you are speaking of other options then you should cover all the options it's like strings starting with one or one zero or one one or one one zero but even otherwise just string starting with one is also a valid answer because it can just skip these two and uh, whatever comes later it will accept all those anyway so these two are like just buffered okay yeah no it's not minimum length three epsilon is actually telling you you can skip that it's the only string of minimum length one and it should start with a one only so when you take epsilon for both the cases it's like it's just one to begin with that's all so it's not minimum length three yeah uh draw, draw the state diagram of nfa that accepts the language which has a b or a b or a b b as a substring so there are multiple ways of doing it you can consider every possible case like let's consider this one it's like brute force you consider each case like it accepts uh, i mean substring ab or substring aab or substring aabb that is one way or you combine the you know some paths you have ab or aab or aabb that is another way or you can use epsilons like this so yeah i won't explain it you you will understand or actually this language is nothing but having substring ab i mean if you build even a machine for substring ab it will anyway cover the remaining cases because even in these cases ab is a substring aab has ab as substring aabb has ab as substring so any one of these options or even other option which is valid will be considered okay there may be more options it's not like these will exhaust all the cases but these are some of the regular ones okay yeah uh, so consider the below nfa give the process tree for the string uh, 1101 and also mention whether the string will be accepted or not and why straightforward q1 on seeing one it goes to q1 and q2 but since uh, q2 to q3 there is an epsilon transition q3 will come freely with q2 so whenever you get q2 you will also get q3 along with it so q1 on one goes to q1 q2 and also q3 because it's epsilon transition and then again on one you check for these three states q1 on one goes to q1 q2 q3 q2 there is no transition on one so this path uh, is dead you can discard this path and q3 on one goes to q4 okay now again next symbol is zero q1 on zero goes to q1 q2 on zero goes to q3 q3 has no output on uh, no transition on zero so again this branch is dead q4 on zero goes to q4 okay finally one q1 on one goes to q1 q2 q3 q3 on one goes to q4 q4 on one goes to q4 that's it you are done reading all the characters now in the leaf nodes is any one of them an accept state if yes the string will be accepted otherwise the string will not be accepted okay so you need to write that also that whether the string is accepted or not and why okay and what is the regular expression for this that accept strings only of odd length again multiple answers this is the best answer simplest answer we already saw an example of um, even length strings that is sigma sigma whole star odd length is you have sigma sigma whole star plus one sigma in addition to that so you have one sigma and pairs of sigmas zero or more times that is one way or you can replace sigma with a union b so you will get a union b and then again a union b dot a union b whole star or you can expand this inner expression and uh, it's like multiplication a a union a b union b a union b b this entire thing whole star that is also fine you can also use plus in the place of union that is also fine or you can say sigma power 1 union sigma cube union sigma power 5 and so on but if you just write sigma power 2n minus 1 that is not correct because it only refers to one particular odd number you have to say union of such sigmas union of odd sigmas 
that is the answer not one or sigma okay all right any doubts okay convert the below nfa to dfa show only the states that are reachable from the start state actually all states are reachable from the start state it's a simple one um you start with one which is the start state and uh, one on a goes to one and two so you will have another state one two so one on a goes to the state one two and one on b goes to only two so you will have another state with two in set brackets so one on b goes only to the state and then uh, this one two on a again check for each element one on a goes to one two and uh, two on a goes to goes nowhere that is null set so one two union null set is again one two so one two on a goes to one two again one two on b take each element one on b goes to two two on b goes to one so one union to one two so one two on b again comes back to one two and uh, two on a goes nowhere so it goes to a null set a state which is named null set and uh, two on b goes to one so it just goes back to one and once you are in so this null set state is like a dead state once you are in the state no matter how many characters you read you will come back to this state only because this state is not even present in nfa okay that's it simple one yes it's a dfa it is reachable from the start state okay final one simple convert this uh, regular expression into nfa step by step uh, nfa for zero two states nfa for one two states and then zero zero you concatenate two nfas take the first nfa uh, have an epsilon transition or uh, yeah an epsilon transition from each of the final states of the first machine to the start state of the second machine in this case there is only one final state so from this state to this state you have an epsilon transition and convert the non the final state here to a non final state okay so similarly 0 0 1 1 0 all of them look similar and then 0 0 whole star so star operation you have epsilon transitions from each of the final states to the start state okay so this 0 0 basically uh it's like i have a star operation means i have epsilon transition from the final state to the start state and i add a new start state which is also a final state with epsilon transition to the previous start state so that's what this machine is showing okay okay um yeah and then 00 star 11 again concatenation so you take this machine and concatenate it with uh, this one so now in this machine you have two final states so from these two final states from these two final states you have epsilon transitions to the start state of the second machine and convert these two final states to non final states that's all and then uh, this machine union 01 this machine so take both these machines and add a new start state with epsilon transitions to the previous two start states okay and then finally this entire machine whole start take this machine add epsilon transitions from um, the final states to the current start state and add a new start state which is also a final state with epsilon transition to the previous start state that's it so that will be this one okay so that is the answer okay any doubts fine so let's move on to the lecture okay so in the previous class we were looking at um, how to convert a dfa to a regular expression so we basically said first you convert this dfa to gnfa gnfa is nothing but you add a new start state and an accept state to the dfa and um, convert all the previous accept states to non accept states and have epsilon transitions from the previous accept states to the new accept state so finally you will be having only one start state and one accept state and the previous machine 
as it is so now you can condense this entire old machine into a regular expression between just the start state and the final state that will be the regular expression equivalent to the original dfa okay that's the idea and then uh, so once you get a gfa basically you convert it to a regular expression step by step by removing one state at a time so how do we remove one state at a time like this so if this is a subgraph in the entire state diagram you need to find a directed path okay there will be a directed path and uh, one more thing gnfa also has other features like um, the start state will have only outgoing arrows no incoming arrows the accept state will have only incoming arrows no outgoing arrows the all the other intermediate states will have outgoing arrow to every other state and including itself so it will have a self loop as well um so in case there is no path normally between any state to other state you will just put a phi there so there will be a path at least with the label phi okay so this is how a gnfa should look so you will always find a directed path to condense you will always find a state except the start state and accept state all the other states will be part of a directed path so you can condense some state replace one state with regular expression so if you have a path like this basically you remove the state and replace it with this regular expression so r1 r2 star r3 union r4 so that's what we will get here r1 r2 star r3 union r4 by removing qrip so you will remove one state at a time and um, so if you start with a five state gnfa you will remove one state and get four state gnfa then three state gnfa and finally two state gnfa and then you will stop the process two state means only start state and accept state whatever is the regular expression on the transition arrow that will be the equivalent regular expression that's all okay so i explained this entire process already uh, we were looking at the formal uh, definitions we uh, last we looked at the formal definition of gnfa right it is again a phi tuple q sigma delta q star this is all similar to the uh, dfa or nfa the last one is uh, different in the sense in dfa or nfa it is always a set of accept states but in gnfa it is only one accept state so there is no concept of set here all right so this is the only difference and then um, the transition function is between two states on the transition you will have a regular expression so it is um, q cross q mapping to a set of regular expressions but within this q cross q you also know that the start state will never be the target state and the accept state will never be the source state so from the source states you remove the accept state and from the target states you remove the start state that's all okay so this is what we saw last time and um, like i mentioned couple of times every time we see the definition of a machine immediately we also see something else what is that like we saw definition of dfa then we saw something else similarly when we saw definition of nfa immediately we saw definition of definition of computation for that machine so it's not sufficient for you to just define the machine you should also formally define what are the conditions under which a string is set to be accepted by that machine okay so now also we will define uh, that for gnfa so formal definition of computation for a gnfa a gnfa accepts a string omega in sigma star if 
omega equal to omega 1, omega 2 and so on up to omega k where each omega i is in sigma star and a sequence of states q0 q1 q2 up to qk such that a sequence of states exists such that some conditions so before we move on to the conditions um, can any one of you find any difference between in this particular statement whatever we wrote so far any difference between this statement and uh, similar statements we wrote for nfa and dfa hmm? sigma star where wi is in sigma star in the earlier cases what was it sigma yeah so why is it sigma star here yeah so you see here each w i in the earlier cases in the earlier cases if you remember w is a string each w i is one character so w is in sigma star whereas w i is in sigma but here w is also in sigma star and w i is also in sigma star so here each w i is not one character it is a string so w is a longer string made of some substrings why because in a gnfa we are not reading character by character to go from one state to the other state we are reading a string at a time to go from one state to the other state right i i also like gave you an example earlier suppose uh, suppose i move from q1 to q2 on some regular expression say a plus b now this regular expression actually refers to a language it refers to the language uh, like a b a b triple a b and so on so you can even have a string with some 100 a's followed by a b okay now if any one of these strings is seen then the machine goes from q1 to q2 okay so that's what a plus b here indicates so here it is not like one letter if you read an a go to the next state if you read a b go to the next state no if you see a string matching with this pattern go to the next state so it's like you are reading one chunk at a time a chunk of symbols at a time so this chunk of symbols is nothing but a string right so this um, so if i say this is w1 this w1 belongs to sigma star because each of these strings belongs to sigma star not sigma only a and b separately belong to sigma but a b a a b triple a b whatever they are they belong to sigma star right and then you may have some other regular expression uh, which is uh, maybe b plus and then you go to q3 now again this is another string so you have a series of b's and then you go to q3 and so on okay so you read some string go to the next state you read some string go to the next state and so on so once you are done reading a series of strings if you land up in the final state by the time you are done reading the string entire string then the string is set to be accepted by the machine okay so that's why here each omega i is in sigma star and not sigma so now let's look at the conditions again there are three conditions q not is the start state qk is the accept state and then for each i we have 
omega i belonging to l of r i where r i equal to delta of q i minus 1 comma q i in other words r i is the regular expression on the arrow from q i minus 1 to q i and again notice here omega i belongs to the language referred to by the regular expression regular expression like i said earlier it actually represents an entire language not one string okay so when i write a regular expression on some arrow it does not mean the machine takes the entire language as input to move from one state to the other state that is not normally done it basically takes a particular string from this language and moves to the other state okay so that's what is written here omega i belongs to the language of regular expression ri okay so so that's the formal definition of computation so you read one string at a time move from one state to the other state by the time you are done reading uh, the entire string if this sequence if this sequence of strings leads you to the accept state by the time you are done reading entire string then this sequence of strings will be accepted by the machine otherwise it will not be accepted okay that's all fine now we also need to look at the formal definition of the function to convert a GNFA to its equivalent regular expression. We already saw how to do it. That is basically you have a directed path in which you have a state which you want to remove or rip off and you replace that state with the regular expression. We discussed this, but we discussed this informally. Now we are looking at the formal definition for that. OK, so basically we define a function called convert. This function takes a GNFA as input. OK, and tries to reduce it to a two state GNFA. This GNFA may have some K states. It will finally try to reduce it to a two state GNFA. So that's what this function does. So let K be the number of states of G. If k equal to 2, then g must consist of a start state and accept state. and a single arrow connecting them and labeled with a regular regular expression <coughs> r
return the expression r Now, if k is greater than two, we select any state q rip belonging to q. different from q start and q accept and let g dash be the gnfa q dash sigma delta dash q start q accept where q dash equal to can anyone tell me what is the relation between q dash and q hmm exactly so q dash is nothing but q minus q rip that's all right so how are you moving from a five state gnfa to a four state gnfa and so on you are removing one particular state so you start with q you remove q rip you will get q dash now this will be your new q you remove another q rip you will get new q dash and so on so we will run it in a loop the loop condition will be mentioned later but the main thing is you remove one state at a time okay so let me actually write this in the next page and for any qi belonging to q dash minus q accept and any qj belonging to q dash minus q start let delta dash of qi qj equal to the regular expression r1 r2 star r3 union r4 <coughs> so this is again exactly same as the diagram i showed you uh for r1 equal to delta of qi q rip so let me take you back to the diagram so this will have delta function right because this is q and once you remove this state you will have q dash without q rip you will have the remaining states and this will have delta dash as the function right now in delta function 
delta of qi r1 is nothing but delta of qi comma q rip okay what is r2 hmm yeah delta of q rip comma q rip and what is r3 delta of q rip comma q j okay now once you remove this q rip you will have delta dash qi and qj okay so delta dash qi and qj is nothing but the regular expression on this transition that will be r1 r2 star r3 union r4 okay so that's what i was writing so r1 is delta of qi comma q rip r2 is delta of q rip comma q rip r3 is delta of q rip comma q j and r4 is delta of qi comma qj right so once you have all these when you remove q rip you will get r1 r2 star r3 union r4 between i and j so that will be the new transition function delta dash so that's what we wrote here so delta dash qi qj will be r1 r2 star r3 union r4 okay so this is the crucial step in this entire algorithm so basically we are defining this function as an algorithm this is the main step everything happens here only removing the state now you need to repeat this step right until you have only two states so the fourth step is the loop step repeat step 3 until k equal to 2 okay finally return the value of convert g dash okay so whatever is the regular expression finally on the two state gnfa that will be the equal and regular expression all right so that's it this concludes the proof of lemma 2 and the theorem that a language is regular if and only if some regular expression describes it okay so we basically uh, broke this theorem into two parts two lemmas the first lemma was that every regular expression describes a regular language so um, we sort of reduced it to converting a regular expression into an nfa or dfa so that's the first part we saw that the second lemma is any language Uh, any regular language will have a regular expression corresponding to it so the proof of that is you take any dfa and convert it to regular expression so that's what we proved just now okay so both the parts are over and hence the theorem is proved done now let's move on to the next section that is non regular languages
Okay, so first let's consider regular expression like this, like zero star one star. Now, what will be the language corresponding to this regular expression? How do I describe this language? Yeah, zero or more zeros followed by zero or more ones. That's it. So. And um, we can also build an NFA for this, right? So how will the NFA look like? Anyone? Yeah. Mm. So to accept states, So here self loop on zero. This one self loop on one. That's it. Zero star one star. Okay, so we can build an NFA for this BFA also, whatever it is. This is a regular language. Fine. Now let's consider one more language. So try building an NFA for this. It doesn't have memory. What doesn't have memory? It has memory, no, it's a finite state machine because it has finite memory. So how do you build an NFA for this? It's not the same one as the above one. It basically says um, number of zeros and number of ones are same. In the previous case, number of zeros and number of ones can be different. Order is same, count is different. Okay, so basically you're saying uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, triple 0, triple 1, and so on, right? But then this diagram itself will have infinite states. We need finite states to accept infinite strings. So that diagram is not allowed. Okay. Hmm. Mm. No matter how large n is, n is finite. So don't worry about the size of n. Yeah, those many states will be needed. Okay, so basically this is not a regular language. No matter how much you try, you can't build an NFA for this. Because here you need to keep track of the count of zeros and ones. And that you can do for a particular n, but not any generic n. So it's not possible to keep track of any generic n count in a finite state machine. Okay. So this is not a regular language. So before getting into more details, Let's work out a couple of more examples. Um, what about this one? 
omega has the same number of zeros and ones. Can you build an NFA for this? Yes, L2 is a subset of L3. See, L2 is a subset of L1 also, but that does not make L1 non-regular, right? So what about the third language? Is it regular or not? Not regular. Why? It's not like we should count a non-finite number. We will be counting finite number only, but it's not a fixed finite number. You don't know which finite number you're going to count. There can be infinite number of finite numbers, even if there are. Yeah, actually, that's the thing. There are infinite number of finite numbers, so you can't count all of them. And any generic, you can't come up with a generic machine for a generic n. Okay, so this is also non-regular. Fine. One last example. Uh, omega such that omega has. An equal number of occurrences of <clears throat> zero one and one zero as substrings. What about this one? Is this regular or non regular? Let me just move on to this. Yeah. Quickly. Non regular. Why? Okay. Huh? That will also be non regular. That's what he's saying. He's saying it's non-regular. Yeah. It's the same, like number of zeros, you can't go back to see how many zeros you have or how many ones you have. Same thing, zero, one, one, zero. Okay. So that's what you might think, but this is a regular language. Okay, this is not a non regular language. This is a regular language. So let me quickly give you the NFA for this. So let's assume you start with the star state where you didn't read any character so far, which means you have seen zero number of zero ones and zero number of one zeros. Okay, so this is a final state, accept state. Now let's, uh, let's assume you have. Uh, Uh, say you are first assuming say you are getting a zero one first. All right. So first I'm seeing a zero. And uh, then I'm seeing a one. Okay. Now here, no matter how many zeros I see, it is still, I haven't seen a zero one yet. Okay. The moment I see a one, it means I have seen a zero one. So Q3 will tell me I have seen a zero one. Okay. Now, as long as you keep getting ones here, you will remain in Q3 because the fact that you have seen a zero one will not change. But if you see a zero now, the moment you see a zero, it means you have seen a one zero. It also means you have seen a zero one and a one zero because from Q3 you are coming back, which means you have seen equal number of zero ones and one zeros. Now, no matter how many times you go in this cycle, it means you have seen equal number of zero ones and one zeros, right? Okay. Now, similarly, the other way, instead of starting with zero one and then seeing one zero, you start with one zero and then see zero one. So the other way is Q4 
you come to q4 on 1 and then on 0 you go to q5 now in q4 no matter how many ones you see you remain in q4 and in q5 no matter how many zeros you see you remain in q5 now you have seen 10 now if you see a 1 that is equivalent to seeing a 0 1 okay so for every 10 you see if you see a 0 1 you go back to the start state which means you have seen equal number of 10s and 0 ones all right now q2 and q4 will also be final states because any additional number of uh, uh sorry no q2 and q4 will not be final states actually um yeah so they will remain as they are that's fine so the thing here is that you are not actually counting number of zero ones and number of one zeros you are just um sort of mapping one instance of one zero with one instance of zero one you see in the previous cases there is no necessary pattern between the count of zeros and the count of ones but here there is a necessary pattern between the count of one zeros and the count of zero ones because suppose you have a graph uh suppose you go up now for you to go up again suppose this is the maximum limit okay now for you to go up again you have to come down and then you may stay and then go up okay so for every time you want to go up you have to come down otherwise you stay there so for every time for you to get a switch from 0 1 to 1 0 you you need to get a zero again all right so the difference will be maximum one so the difference cannot be more than one so there can never be a case where you have two instances of 1 zeros and 10 instances of 0 ones no that's not possible because every time you are getting a zero one you are also getting one zero with it somewhere it is switching back to the previous one okay so they are related this relation is trumping the count okay so we will discuss this in a little more detail later uh, actually this is not the exact diagram i will show you the exact diagram later but the idea is this but we will see the exact diagram later so there is some mistake in this i'll uh, show the correct one in the next class okay